Welcome to California Heist for Real, episode number six. No. Banks Real. Today, we are in the United Kingdom, talking about HS1. Oh my dice. Wow, okay, right, I'm sorry. It's a little confusing, ain't it? Y you know, talking about California Heist for Real, then coming straight to this. But, the reason behind it, yeah. Please, stop this madness. Is because I wanted to talk about something special for my 1K video. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm done. I'll, I'll stop. Please exit to the rear door. Doors open. Welcome to the UK. Talking about the UK for my 1K. How fitting is that? Today we're going to talk about High Speed 1. For those of you who don't know, High Speed 1, legally referred to as the Channel Tunnel Rail Link, is a 68.3 mile long high speed rail line linking the Channel Tunnel with London. The full line was completed in 2007, and now is an integral part for international travel in the UK. But how and why was it created? The full story is fascinating and parallels some of the rail projects we have here in the US. We can all learn a lot from this project. With that being said, RoboRail, story mode please. Okay, right. I'm so excited that we finally built a fixed link to mainland Europe. Can you believe we just built the longest underwater tunnel in the world? I know right, it's splendid. We can now transport freight and tourists much faster than before. An engineering marvel I call it. Right but, is anyone else starting to notice a bottleneck forming on tracks into London? Well, yeah, that's why we told France and Belgium that we would build a direct high speed line to London. Railtrack will get on that project pretty soon. But Railtrack, a private rail infrastructure company, wasn't quite prepared to do this. We're still doing that? Yeah. I thought you were planning to do that. I mean you agreed that this would be the- Right, it's just that, I have a lot on my plate, yeah? I have the West Coast Main Line, a possible upcoming legal battle with Virgin Trains- Oh, you too? I'm sorry. Who are you? Sorry this is not my video. Right. I'm not sure who that b is. Bottom line is, I have a lot on my plate, yeah, and I'm not getting enough government support for it all. I hear you man. Right. If it's not your video, how about you b off mate? Go on. Making a mockery out of my problems. Sorry. You understand that French investors won't be happy with this. I'm sure they'll understand. Yeah, I'm shocked. It's nonsense. It's incredible. You don't get to back out of this one rail track. We already invested billion into this project. Right. But I'm the one doing the main investment, yeah? Because it's your high system. Right. But you don't have to yell at me. Your high lines are a nightmare for the Eurostar. How can we offer reliable international high speed service when our trains are stuck behind freight and regional train? Tell me about it. Who are you? I'm not sure where they're coming from. Rail track. You need to sort this out. What? The weird companies that keep showing up? or the high-speed rail line I'm supposed to build, because I'm pretty sure these companies are coming from America. What? The high-speed rail line you were supposed to build? Right, but it is like 2.5 billion pounds. Where am I supposed to get that money? Figure it out. SNCF wasn't having it. This is mostly due to the fact that SNCF just finished a high-speed rail line from Paris to Marseille that year, with 155 miles of that line having the same price tag as high-speed one. So in reality, there was no excuse. SNCF called out Britain's railways for their insufficient investments. But was it really their fault? Because of privatization, a lot of British rail companies didn't have enough capital to actually improve their infrastructure. Americans, seeing some similarities? Rail track was struggling, and with the enforcement of new safety regulations, Without any government support to back it up, the company simply didn't have enough capital to complete this project. So they decided to approach the government. But just like in the US, the government will use the fact that it's a private company as an excuse not to invest in it. You know, the classic, well you're a private company, so figure it out, excuse. Keep in mind, Eurostar trains are running at a maximum speed of 100 miles per hour in Britain's network. I know some Americans are like, oh wow, 100 miles an hour. Like, the train speed goes into triple digits and we throw a 4th of July party for it. Like, relax. Anyways, Eurostar trains were consistently delayed by other traffic on the network. It's safe to say that SNCF was getting nervous, as this wasn't the first time that Britain failed to complete the rail link. In the early 1970s, 
British Rail proposed the route passing through Tunbridge, a small market town in Kent, but the rail line faced heavy opposition from no! social and environmental leaders. This led Anthony Crossland, the environmental minister, to scrap the project, leaving France and Britain with no rail link or tunnel. But almost two decades passed by, and this time Britain swears it's going to be different. Roborail, story mode please. Okay. So France is still on us about not having a solid plan for the Channel Tunnel. What are we going to do? We need to commit. Oh, I have a plan. Yeah, let's pass an act that certifies our commitment. But also makes it illegal for government spending on the project. This way we aren't really committed. I feel like Steve Harvey after listening to a bad answer on Family Feud. But this is the 1980s, right after the hype of neoliberalism, so it's fair. Regardless, construction got delayed another 10 years until the Channel Tunnel Rail Link Act of 1996. The reason why? Because private investors were sort of like, eh. This led then Deputy Prime Minister Michael Heseltine to straight up change the project last minute, from a terminus under the King's Cross station to being at the underutilized St. Pancras terminus, which at that point was pretty much abandoned by the London Midland Scottish Railway and further abandoned by British railways. This is because after rationalization, the terminus was deemed redundant. Which I mean like, yeah, you know, can't get any closer than that. This reminds me of a certain terminus in Philadelphia. Anyways, it was clear that this plan was a huge win for urban renewal, as private investors finally got excited about the project. On top of this, environmentalists and engineers highly approved of this idea. I mean, this was pretty much a no-brainer. You use the rail terminus to be the rail terminus. No need for the large underground station. I know, I know. It's still disappointing. By 1994, St. Pancras became the official terminal, but because there was no official rail link built yet, Eurostar trains had to start off using the London Waterloo station. Two years later, London Continental Railways was chosen by the UK government to build the entire line. That same year, they also took over the British government's share in Eurostar. At this point, LCR was kind of stacked. They had National Express, they're basically a UK transportation goliath, which I know means probably nothing to American viewers, and they had Virgin Group, which I know means probably everything to American viewers. They also had Betchel, London Electric, and SG Warwick and Company. Two years later, due to trouble financing the project privately, the first first phase, which was supposed to be the entire route, was split in half. Wow, not being able to fund the entire first phase and splitting your rail route in half because you don't have enough funding? Hmm, sounds familiar. Hmm, sounds familiar. Hmm, sounds familiar. Man, I can go on and on. Sounds, 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 sounds familiar. That same year, Railtrack bought Section 1 of the rail line, with an option to buy Section 2. Well, you already know how that goes. Anyways, I like to harp on the fact that it's not a bad thing that rail lines don't get fully built out the first time around. Not being able to complete the full rail line is not a reflection on the authority or company, it's a reflection on the government. If the government is barely invested, then the project is barely getting built. But the government typically reflects the people, so it's up to us to vocalize when we want a project to be built. Be a Yimby, or an Yimby, I don't care, whatever rocks your boat, but on top of all that, be patient. Once the project is being built, it's hard for that project to stop. Somebody's gonna finish it. I guess what I'm saying is, calm your ass down. So that's it for this video. I'll do episode 2 when we reach 2k. So for you UK viewers, you better subscribe. With that being said, if I earned your like and subscription, I love you, and if you got this far in the video, thanks for watching.